Hello YouTube and welcome back to the Monthly Family Living. So tonight I am making a dish that we found on Facebook. It's called a homestyle ground beef casserole. Um, I'm going to go through some of the ingredients right here with you. Uh, this is our first time making it. Um, I'm excited to see how it turns out. It sounds very good and uh, this is something we typically do. We find recipes wherever that we haven't tried before and we try them. This time around I figured I would take you along with us. So here we go. Okay, so I'm going to go through the list of ingredients for you. I apologize in advance because my regular camera is not doing very well. It's got a crack in it, so as you can tell, it's kind of blurry. But you're going to need roughly one pound of hamburger meat, which I've got a little bit more because we enjoy more hamburger meat, and there's more of us here. You're also going to need egg noodles, uh, three cups, which I have here. This is a two cup. That's a one cup black pepper, Italian seasonings, salt, I'm using sea salt. It calls for a pinch of sugar, but I also add a little bit of cinnamon to my hamburger meat to make it kind of hold in the juices and not get so dry. So I'm just going to throw a dash of this in there. It's got cinnamon and sugar together. Minced garlic. It's not necessarily fresh, but it works. And we've got tomato paste, six out cans, and we've got diced tomatoes, and it calls for Rotel tomatoes, but I have this one here. It's fire roasted with garlic. Uh, I figured it might be a little bit better than having green chilies, because we have also a lot of problems with heartburn. <laughs> then we have some fresh, let's see if it'll focus, scallions from the yard that I've grown. Some cream cheese, sour cream, and shredded cheeses, mozzarella, cheddar, and parmesan. And then over here, I've already got my water started to boil for my noodles. And I'm going to start heating up the meat, and we will go from there. Okay, well, hopefully you guys can see me pretty well. So, what I'm doing now is browning my hamburger meat. I'm also going to season it here in a second, but first of all, my water from my noodles over here has come up to a boil. So before I throw my noodles in, I'm going to share with you a tip that I learned from another YouTube channel called Struggle Meals. He said, always be sure to flavor your water, otherwise your noodles will have no flavor. So, I'm going to add a little bit of sea salt. Not a whole lot, because pasta's already kind of salty anyway. Dash of garlic powder. Dash of pepper. One of the things we really like a lot around here is some pepper. <laughs> now, meat portion of it after I get my noodles poured in. Now mind you, these are egg noodles, so they're not going to take long to cook. And I'm only going to cook these until they're what they consider al dente, which is almost cooked, but still a little bit hard. Since this is a casserole, it's going into the oven, so I want it to not be too soggy once it comes out. Anyway, I'm going to continue browning this meat, and then uh, when I'm done there, I will show you where we pick up. Okay, my hamburger meat's been browning for a minute. Now I'm going to take and season it. My noodles over here are actually almost done to where I need them to be. But first of all, I'm going to add my dash of cinnamon sugar. A 
pinch of sea salt. My Italian seasonings. other people like to see how I cook certain things. A little bit more. Mm -hmm. Pepper. Yep. Need help? Oh, jeez. Uh, I'll have to see. I'm not sure where I'm getting to next. Throw this around. What side do you need? Well, those seasonings I don't need anymore right now. My oldest son, Lady, loves to help. Okay, so these. Call these done. They're still just barely stiff. So I want to get them out of there and I want to cool them down so they don't cook anymore. So I will do that and do. Okay, I've drained my noodles, which some people may not know this, but I'll say it. You know, and those that you do, then you know it anyway. But noodles, if you leave them in the hot water after you turn them off, even if you just leave them on the stove, will actually continue to cook. I've made that mistake a few times before, and I've had nothing but just soggy, fall-apart noodles, and not good. So I've taken them off. I've put them in the sink with some cold water. I've got my casserole dish ready that I'm going to be pouring my ingredients into. But for now, I'm going to start by cooking in my tomatoes. So I'm going to start with my diced tomatoes. ones with the roasted garlic and onion, or just roasted garlic, excuse me. And my tomato paste. Now tomato paste is good because it takes and thickens everything up. don't have any tomato paste, you might be able to get away with taking a little bit of cornstarch and cold water, mixing it up really good beforehand, and pouring the water into your mixture, but stir constantly as you do, otherwise it will thicken in one place and you will have hard spots all over. I found that out the hard way with my gravy. that's simmered together, I will... Okay. So I've turned my meat down to a simmer. It's starting to kind of bubble just a little bit, but that'll give that tomato paste a good chance to mix in and thicken everything up. Now this recipe calls for 8 ounces of sour cream. I have a 16 ounce, so I'm just going to try to guesstimate half of it. So... And some of these things you don't have to worry about being so accurate on. The only time you have to really worry about accuracy is when it comes to chemical reactions and things when it comes to food. Which, yeah, some of cooking is chemistry. So, there's my sour cream. Also, we're going to mix in the cream cheese. I've left this set out so it would kind of warm up and hopefully soften good to where... It will mix in well. And I just noticed the other thing I left out was my garlic. So, here in a minute I'm going to take a spoonful, which is roughly about anywhere from a half to 
a full teaspoon is usually rough. Well, when it comes to minced, a half teaspoon is one clove. Full teaspoon is uh, two cloves, which I'll probably do two. We like a lot of garlic. Right. As I work to get this open. Trust me, once you, yeah. Oh, it? It'll be in there and it'll be mixed up so well you won't even know it's in there. <laughs> Kids. <laughs> Alright, now. I have a habit of rinsing my hands often, so. <laughs> to mix all this together. Once I get it good and mixed, I'm going to add in my green onion, uh, some of my what? other seasonings I think I will leave out. I've already got them in my hamburger meat, so we shouldn't need them. Anyway, I will get this all mixed together and let you see what that looks like. Okay. I don't know if you can see, but I've gotten all this mixed up pretty well. Now this mixture, I'm going to take my undercooked noodles, and I'm going to stir them around in it. Make sure they're good and coated. After this, I'm going to grease, well, not necessarily grease, but like cooking spray my casserole dish, and I'm going to lay this mixture in the bottom of it. Okay, that looks good. Alright, well, I'm going to get my casserole dish ready, and then I will show you what that looks like after I'm done. Okay, so there is my noodle, cream cheese, sour cream. You can't even see it in there, but there's green onion up in there. That's that mixture. That's the base. Here's my meat mixture. This will go on after. And then the cheese over there will go on top of that. So I'm going to start spooning, and I'm going to try and do this one-handed, so we'll see how well this turns out. <laughs> anyway, let me get my fork out of here. Actually, I will get it into the dish one at a time, and then I will film that and let you see what it looks like. Okay, there's what the noodles and the cream cheese and sour cream look like together in the base of my casserole dish. Okay, there is my meat mixture on top of the noodles, sour cream, and cream cheese. You can see that at the bottom. Now all we're left to do is just to cover the top with cheese, which I've noticed that when you cover it with cheese and completely and try to leave as little pockets as possible, it cooks a lot better in my opinion and doesn't dry out as easily. Anyway, so I'm going to do that and show you how that looks. Okay, now that this is all cheesed up, I'm going to take a piece of aluminum foil to cover it with. I'm going to cover it with a piece that is nonstick sprayed side down and then we are going to 
give it about 30 minutes and then five minutes with it uncovered and see how it does. Anyway, I will bring you back at that point. Okay, so it's been 30 minutes. So I'm going to end up taking that out. I can hear it bubbling. And we're going to take the aluminum foil off. Oh, it's smelling awfully good. Oh yeah, that's bubbling. Uh, and if only you could smell it, that smells good. Alright, now we're going to put it back in for another five minutes. So I'm going to set the timer. And I'm going to put this back in there and then set it for an additional five. And then we'll see how it turns out after that. Okay, and I just pulled it out. Here's what it looks like. It's still bubbling a little bit. We're going to give it a chance to cool, and then we're all going to dig into it. And we will all kind of give you our opinion on how it turned out. Anyway, see you there. Okay, so here's the first dishing that I'm doing. It's going to be Fred's. Let's go see what he thinks. Test results. Yep. Here's. I have to go back. Alright, here's the first bite. It's good. It's like lasagna. Kind of like lasagna. I was going to say, like cooking and smelling, that's what it smelled like. It's like a. I like lasagna was a. Um, like a goulash. Okay, yeah, that, that kind of makes sense. You know, I like the goulash version yeah. of lasagna. With egg noodles instead. still good, though. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so it wasn't a loss. Alright, well, I guess it's the Mumford Family Living signing out. I guess that means of a success, huh?